Hello everybody, welcome to this another uh, video, this session of uh, chemistry practicals. And in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the essay. Essay means analysis of a commercial sample of aspirin. It is chemically it is known as acetyl salicylic acid, and they are going to use phenol red as an indicator. Phenol red indicator. Okay, so this is what, my dear friends, the aim of today's experiment: assay analysis of commercial sample of aspirin using phenol red indicator. When we talk about acetyl salicylic acid, my dear friends. It has got two very important properties, and that is, it is going to be antipyretic. That means it is going to reduce the body temperature. Okay, so when a person is suffering from fever and all, so it behaves as an antipyretic. It is also analgesic. Okay, that means in simple words, we say it is a painkiller. So analgesic property, antipyretic property. Also, it is being Suffering from heart diseases, so that it makes the blood thin. Okay, so aspirin is given for that particular purpose as well. All right. So, anyways, the aim of this today's experiment is to commercial sample of aspirin. What is the purity? Okay, so that is what the analysis is based on. Now, my dear friends, this entire process of analysis is in two parts. Part one is standardized. And part two is estimation. Aspirin, as I told you, is acetyl salicylic acid. So when I say it is acid, and if I want to find out the purity of this by volumetric technique, so obviously it has to be titrated against the base. And which is the most important and the easiest and the first coming mind base, and that is NaOH. So we have to titrate this aspirin with NaOH. But my dear friends, if I want to get the exact percentage purity of aspirin, okay, I have to be doubly sure about the concentration of NaOH. And hence, for that guarantee of the concentration of NaOH, we have to standardize that NaOH. Okay, so I hope you understood the purpose. Okay, so first we standardize the NaOH, process of finding the exact normality of NaOH, and then making use of that exact normality of NaOH. We will be titrating it against what aspirin. So these are the two parts. So in the standardization, we will standardize the NaOH, and in the second part, we are going to use our standardized NaOH for estimating the percentage purity of the commercial sample of aspirin. I hope you have understood up to this very well. Welcome back. We begin with the standardization of NaOH. Okay. So when we talk about standardization. It's the process of determination of the exact normality. All right. Now, how to standardize this? Obviously, it has to be titrated against the solution whose concentration is exactly known. So, the solution or a substance whose concentration is exactly known before you actually carry out the experiment is called as a primary standard. Okay. What is it called as primary standard? So, here in this experiment. The primary standard that we are using is succinic acid. Okay, it is what succinic acid. Now succinic acid, the molecular weight of which is 118 grams. Okay, but then because it has two replaceable H plus ions. Okay, because succinic acid, the formula is CH2COOH. CH2COOH. Okay, so these are the two replaceable. H plus ions I am talking about, and therefore, when we consider its equivalent weight, it comes out to be 59. So we are going to prepare 0.1 normal of succinic acid. So to prepare 0.1 normal of succinic acid, we are going to take 0.59 grams in 100 ml because 100 ml is sufficient for the titration process. All right. So we begin with step number one, and that is prepare. 0 0.1 normal. I write down succinic 
acid. How to prepare? 0.59 grams. Dissolve in 100 cm of distilled blood. Okay, so we get this succinic acid. Now what we do is, the next point is, we are going to titrate against the burette solution. Okay, and that burette solution is NaOH. Burette solution is NaOH. Now, exact alkalinity of which we don't know. And that is our aim to standardize, to find out exact normality of NaOH. So, the next point is, in the particle flux, we are going to prepare up 25 cm of 0.1 normal succinic acid. To this, you are going to add 2 to 3 drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Now, my dear friends, remember, the indicators are generally pH sensitive. So, phenolphthalein indicator in an acidic medium does not show any color change. So, phenolphthalein itself is colorless, so obviously the solution will remain colorless. Now, the next step is, we are going to titrate. Obviously, against what? The buried solution is NaOH. So, what happens is, phenolphthalein indicator in a basic medium is going to show a pink coloration. So, therefore, the color change will be colorless to pink. Okay, colorless to pink. And you need to record the reading. Carry out this procedure for three times. Out of the three, at least two readings has to be constant, exactly same, and that is being noted as CBR. And then by making use of the CBR value, okay, we can calculate the exact normality of NMH. So this is the standardization procedure, whereby, first of all is, we are going to prepare point one normal succinic acid. Next is the buried solution is filled with anoids, supplied anoids, whose exact normality has to be determined. We need to prepare out 25 cm cube of the succinic acid solution. Okay, in a particle flask, add around two or three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Even after the addition of the indicator, the solution remains colorless. Okay, because it's pH sensitive in the acidic medium, is no change at all. Okay, it is going to be showing a sensitivity only in the basic media. So as we start adding NaOH from the buret, what will happen is a color change takes place and that is colorless to pink. And when it is going to be pink, so obviously that is what our reading is. And then finally, we find out the CBR and that is the way we are going to estimate or exactly find out the concentration of NaOH. I hope you have understood the standardization process. Yes, my dear friends, now we proceed to the next step. And that is estimation. Okay. Once we have standardized NaOH, okay, we now go into the estimation part. So in the estimation is the steps involved are step number one. We are going to take 0.5 grams. Okay, we are going to take the exact weight of that. Please keep this in mind. So 0.5 grams of aspirin. We are going to dissolve it in. 20 cm cube of the standardized NaOH. Okay, I write down in short S. So that means it means what? Standardized NaOH. Okay? Next is we are going to heat it also. So carry out the boiling process for around 10 minutes. Okay, boiling is to be done for about 10 minutes. Now, once the entire clear solution is obtained, we are going to add to it the indicator. The indicator is a phenol 
re-indicator. Next is, we are going to titrate this. See, this is the external value which we have added variables. And then which is base. So obviously it has to be titrated against what? The acid. And the acid is HCl. So we are going to titrate it with 0.5 carbon HCl using phenol red indicator. So the color change which is going to be there is going to be red to yellowish orange. Okay, this is going to be the color change. And let us consider this value what we get as X2CL2. Okay, now repeat the same titration. I want to write down over here. Repeat the same titration that is 20 CL3 of the standardized NaOH versus. 0.5 normal HCl. But this time, my dear friends, remember it is without aspirin. It is what? Without aspirin. So we also call this as what? A blank titration. Okay, we call it as what? Blank titration. And suppose we get X3 CNQ as the rate. So X2 CNQ is NaOH and aspirin. X3 is going to be only NaOH. So as a result of this, the difference between the two, that is X3 minus of X2 CNQ, that is equal to the amount of NaOH which is being required by acetyl salicylic acid, or we simply call it as what? Aspirin. Okay, so this is my dear friends about the estimation. I'll just quickly take a recap. And that is, 0 0.5 grams of aspirin has to be weighed accurately. So whatever is the accurate weight, that has to be noted. Suppose it is 0 0.520, 0 0.521, or 0.531, whatever it is. You have to exactly take a note of that weight. Dissolve it in 20 cm cube of NaOH, which is the standardized one from part 1. Boil it for 10 minutes so that it gets completely dissolved. And then you are going to add phenol red indicator, titrate it against 0.5 normal H here. The end point is going to be from red to yellow orange. Uh, the value that we get, say for example, is x 2 cmq Next, repeat the same titration, but this time it is what? Without aspirin. So what you do is you take the 20 cmq of standardized NOH, titrate it against 0.5 normal of H here from the unit. Whatever the rating that we get, let us consider this as X3. And then the difference between the two that is x3 minus of x2 gives us the amount of NaOH which is required by the sample of aspirin. And then we'll be doing some calculations and finally we'll determine the percentage purity of the given sample of aspirin. I hope you have understood this process very well. Yes, my dear friends, we now start with the practical demonstration. So, first of all, is we are going to prepare the primary standard. The primary standard is succinic acid, so 0.59 grams of succinic acid has to be dissolved in what? And that's CNQ. So here we go. First of all is try to dissolve it in minimum quantity. Don't directly add the entire 100 CNQ into the beaker. So take some small quantity of water and make sure that each and every particle of succinic acid is being transferred into the beaker. So you can see now, this watch glass is absolutely clear. You can check it out. Now, we will add around, say, approximately around 40 to 50 ml of water. And we will dissolve it. Succinic acid is a water soluble acid. So, it will get dissolved very easily. So here it is for your things. It's dissolved. Now we are going to transfer this into a standard measuring class. This is 100 cm standard measuring class. So we transfer it very slowly.
We give some washings to this beaker to ensure the complete transfer of acidic acid. And now we will be doing the final dilution. Hold the sun and the fast to your eye level. Okay, so we are getting it exactly at the mark. If at all it is not possible for you to do it, so you can make use of a dropper or a pipette for the final marking. And now we just want to make sure that the solution becomes absolutely homogeneous. So this is it, my dear friends. This is the succinic acid preparation. Okay, better. I hope you have understood after this. This is also called as a primary stamp. Okay, so how much we have prepared? Yes, it's 0.1 gram. Okay, now this has to be titrated against for NMH. This is the supplied NMH whose exact normality has to be determined. So that is being filled in the bureau up to the zero mark. Now, the next step, what I'll be doing is we're going to use a free particle flask. We are going to prepare out. 25 cm of the succinic acid solution which we have prepared right now. So this is exact 25 level. Into this, we are now going to add two, three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. Now, as I said, it's not going to be sensitive in the acidic medium, so it's going to remain white. Now, we start with the titration against NOH. Color change, you know it very well, it has to be white too. Wait. We start up, drop by drop, we will be adding, even after shaking the pink color should sustain, that will be our correct reading. So very slowly, drop by drop, we are going to make sure that the addition takes place and the conical flask has to be continuously stirred, so that you can see the pink color do develop at the point of contact, but then on shaking the conical flask, it disappears. So we need to continue till the purple pink color. Now, my dear friends, we start with the second part of the titration, and that is about what we are going to do is we are going to weigh 0.5 grams of aspirin and we are going to dissolve it in NaOH.
Alright? So, here we go. In the first class, we have already measured aspirin. The conical flask contains NaOH, the normality of which is 0.5 RB. I take it 20 ml exactly, but then purposely I have removed some amount of the NOH that is the 20 ml so that I can carry out that for washing purpose of the vajla so that I want to make sure that the entire amount of 0.5 grams goes into the conical flask. So for that purpose I will be just giving some washings with the NOH itself ok so it becomes absolutely clear now it is being dissolved in an image and then we are going to boil it gently for say around 10 minutes so here we go for the boiling purpose so this is a class 20 events where aspirin is being dissolved in NMH it was being boiled, it's cooled now what we do is we are going to add few drops of the phenol red indicator and now the dilution is going to be against what HCl the unit is already being filled with uh, 0.5 normal HCl so we start drop points they are going to begin the color change has to be around yellowish orange See this is what the color that we are getting, okay, the yellowish coloration and the reading is 10.2. We start with the final part of this uh, estimation and that is the blank titration. Okay, as I explained to you, blank titration is what? Without the sample. The previous titration which was being done, that was uh, along with the sample that is aspirin and NaOH. Now this is only NaOH. So what are we going to do is two or three drops of the indicator, the same indicator. Phenol red indicator and we titrate it against the same period solution and that is going to be what? HCl.
that's it this is the color change that we are getting that is yellow and the reading that we have is 20.3 so my dear friends we went for three readings first one was with respect to what standardization all right that is x1 second x2 what was that in that aspirin along with nh and that was being targeted against hca and this one x3 that was only a blank titration without aspirin all right and that is nh against hca so these are the three readings we have x1 x2 as well as x3 now x3 minus x2 is actually giving us the amount of nh which is corresponding to us aspirin so using these values we can find out the percentage purity of aspirin so i hope you have understood this experiment very well